All right, good day to everyone. This is Wednesday, November 4... 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. Uh, where are we? I was already thinking of what I was saying next, which is we're the last show for this week. We are. Yes, that is true. We are. This is the last show for this week. There's no Thursday or Friday show, so don't wait too long for those episodes because we'll be back on Monday. And also, you don't see us because I have the wrong scene here. Let me change it to this. Nope. Wrong. That's an empty TV. Turn on the channel. Uh, I have. No, I can't find the batteries for the controller. Wait, here, here's some batteries right double here. Double A, triple A, nine volts. There, there's batteries now. Did you right. just press the button. Okay, I pressed it. There you go. All right. Now the TV is on. How, how about this other one? Let, let's see. <gasps> picture in picture. But you're not thinking. Uh, you're not thinking of anything, Joe. I'm thinking about food right now. Uh, well, that's why it's blank. You know, I always, <laughs> I always think about food. Because uh, you just told me. Um, What's up? A story of you eating too much at Lucille's. Yeah, you know, I actually. That's have... why it's blank because you don't want to think about. It right if you now. check the fridge that we have right now, it's still in the fridge, which I'm gonna. It's cons- full of barbecue. Can I gonna consume later? Well, we'll think about our daily show. Right. <laughs> there you go. Thank so, you, Joe. It is. It's coming out of your nose though, so you need to move a little bit this way. Oh no! It's, uh, I'll leave. There you it's go. Allergy. I can have allergies, man. Okay. <laughs> so it is Wednesday, November twenty-fourth. The so, last daily show for the day because of Thanksgiving. Of the week. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. <laughs> of the, what of did the I day. say? You said of the of day. The day. <laughs> well, it well, is. It is, a, it is only one Te- episode per Technically, yes. it is always the last daily show. That is. That is. It's the first and last show of the day. Yes. All and right. if it's Sunday or Saturday, there is there is no first or last either. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, wait, before wait, I get confused oh, even further, yes. let's uh, move on to observance. Or All should right. we? <laughs> All right. Daily observances, what do we have? What do we have? Ooh, National Sardines Day. I love sardines. You know, some people, they don't like sardines because, like, oh, no. little fish bones in it. You know, it's but you could, the, the, you the, the ones it. in the car, the ones in the can, you could actually eat the bones because it's so pressure cooked that it, it's literally just calcium. It's good for you. <laughs> you know, there's one, uh, what is it, one phrase where it's like, it's like being, Together in a sardine in a can, like where you're packed, totally packing like a car. Yeah, or like, we're like seating, sardines. Sardines. In a Even can. though you could actually have sardines like you see on the picture right here, where you just grill it. Uh, yeah. Itself. I never have. Oh, actually no. I had this. This is one can sardine that I had. It was uh, how was the word? Bathed, soaked, and tomato sauce. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's very popular in the Philippines. Yeah, I love eating that. The, with the rice. tomato sauce and. <laughs> I like the one that's spicy because, you know, us Filipinos, we're not fond yes. of spiciness. So oh, the spicy really? can is actually just slightly spicy. It's not so even it's that spicy. So it's yeah, it's like very mild. So but w- but it makes it interesting because sardines is like an oily fish. Right, it is. It is so right. if you add spice to it, it balances it out. Oh, yes. So how would you say it? Is it being bathed, soaked, or I think the word is submerged. Right? Submer- no, submerged is just... Immersed. Immersed, probably. Immersed. So it is sardine immersed in kind of like a tomato sauce, liquidy tomato sauce. My favorite like is actually the oil ones, the ones that come from uh, Ooh, that's a little bit Portugal. Too. Yeah, those are rich. If it's rich, it's rich. You can't yeah. eat it on its own. You have to eat it with rice or because sandwich, of all like a bread. Yeah, because it, it has to have something that balances out the oil. But what but we see here, right? The oiled ones. What? Doesn't have an usually doesn't have an option. It's always spicy because, like I said, mm. you need something to balance the oil. The oil, yes. So yeah. The oil, the uh, the heat will cut through the fat. The oil. It's usually olive oil too, so yes. not that. So it's not that concerned. Bad. It's good yeah. for your heart too. It's like good cholesterol. Yeah. But looking at this picture, it's like basically how we usually consume it. Like majority of the time, it's like grilled, and you can eat it on a stick. It's and, and it's actually a great fish for people who don't like bones because. Well, uh, maybe not the grilled one. You yeah. still have to take the yeah, bones out. Yeah, you but if you eat the canned ones, you don't need to worry about the bones. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, you ever heard the dish called lutefisk? Yeah, because yes. it's jellyfied already. Because the lye, it pretty much made the bones of fish uh, gelatinous. Like yes. you said, gelatinous is easy to consume. You know, you can't go wrong with like, for me, back when I was growing up, right? It was just 
grilled sardine and white rice. That's it. It's perfect. The the big thing, the big hurdle you have to go through with sardines is it's one of those fish that has a very distinct odor. It does. Yes, yeah, it it's does. not like cod where if you cook it right, it's just it doesn't smell like anything. Mm. Or if it's fresh, it doesn't smell. It just smells like the sea. It's the chemicals in there. The fish rotting fish smell. No, it's more like a fishy smell. Yeah. Because like, because it's an oily fish. Most of the oily fishes, like mackerel, uh -huh. have a distinct odor yes. because of the oils. Well, guess what? Your perfume or cologne is made of oil, so it sticks to you and gets. The perfume is actually yeah. comes from a uh, well vomit, ambergris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything oily. Yes. Next is National Jukebox Day. Um, this is like the super. Uh, like retro, uh, yeah. Retro, uh, e even the lady is uh, dressed really retro with she, the polka dots. It's like the what's that called? The arm sleeve, arm sleeve. I guess. I guess. I know. We super at this, long gloves. You think of like what? Uh, what's that one A comic book? Archie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The um, polka dots, Betty Boop's back in there. Yeah, but you know, jukebox nowadays is just a decoration. Uh, because functionality is not basically used anymore. No. Because it's our, our it's the, like the, yeah, thing. this is our jukebox now. Our phone, Spotify, <laughs> yeah. iTunes, whatever um, you use. But uh, novelty. Uh, speaking of novelty, I even bought uh, a Blu-ray complete set of Cowboy Bebop just now because <laughs> that bad man. Yeah, because I was oh, worried yeah. that you know. It's gonna disappear because of the new renditions of it not being good at all. You know, so the thing was like, here's the funny part: I don't even have a Blu-ray player. You just do it for like. I, I just want a copy in case it disappears. I have it, just like in The Simpsons. Now that The Simpsons is not that funny anymore, I have the first few seasons in DVD. Which are better? Yeah. The so best. so if awesome. now that I can't really watch the old uh, the old seasons anymore because it doesn't air. Or even if they air it, there's like how many seasons now? So it takes a long time to get back to the. <laughs> I, I, have, I, I, I kind of find it amusing for you because, like, I think it's like this is like what your second heartbreak. Your first heartbreak was the live action uh, episode, uh, Last Man. Oh no! Yeah, no. That was... yeah they, well, guess what? I have a DVD. Exactly. So <laughs> this Avatar. this new heartbreak, uh, Cowboy Bebop, is one of mine and Ian's like classic. Uh, yeah, it, show. it it makes. Whenever they ruin an old show, it makes me buy the old show. Same thing with this is the jukebox is mostly like nostalgic factor. Yes, right? so so say that's why we brought, I brought it up is because uh, for those who own a jukebox in their house, you, you'd usually find it like Ruby's or one of those you know yes, diners uh, with that aesthetic. What is it called? It's just called diners, right? Yeah, like oh, well, I guess you'd say diners, sixties din or seventies 60, diners, sixties, seventies diners. You know, uh, um, but there are people who buy a jukebox and put it in their house because they just like, they collect or they, they like how it looks, right. you know. It has like your classic music in there too, like and, Elvis. Yeah, and yeah, and, and they just, even though it's not high fidelity sound, they want to hear that little blurry scratchy. Oh, vinyl, the vinyl <laughs> It scratchy, gives it needle. character, is what they say. It yeah. gives it a little say. But the thing is like, I'm kind of traumatized by jukebox because Why? one of my favorite shows it was uh, it's called Sopranos. But the end scene is uh, the main character playing Journey, song Journey on the jukebox, and it just cut the black. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh. when I hear the song Journey on the jukebox, I'm just like, I'm out, I'm out. I don't want to listen to this. But yeah, and, mostly and, you see most movies, jukebox yeah. would have the, the, the yeah, song Journey. journey yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next, we have. <laughs> what what is do you picture? love about America Day? So, what uh, is this picture? <laughs> yeah, so for the picture, I just googled the most American picture. I literally typed the most American picture, and this is what came up. Mm. It's, he's missing writing on like a T Rex or something. I don't think T Rex are American. I mean, they were in the continent, but that was before we became America. So I don't, there are, I saw, I saw a picture of him riding a T-Rex, mm. but I didn't choose that because it did not have, I don't think T-Rex, even though it's really cool, right? it's not, Amer this is all America. Well, he has, I, I believe, a gun that's American, uh, the, the, the bald eagle. Uh, he has, I think, a rifle in the back, which is what we use in the Revolutionary War. 
Um, that's George Washington. The American flag, you know, that's that's America. So this, <laughs> instead of us telling you, right, well, actually, we right, should tell right. them one thing. And then after we tell you our one thing, you guys should put on the comments, right. what do you love about America? So it's, it's more like a question I put, forgot to put. I guess there should be a question mark in there somewhere. Right? For me, it's mostly the... I don't want to say, well, we will say freedom, right? But that's a given. Right? But that's like that's a given. most world. Yeah, exactly. Most, most country in the world. Uh, I want to say convenience. Oh. Because like when I was in like Europe and other places, right? Like when you need something, right? In America, you can just run to the nearest Costco, your nearest Target, your CVS, 7-Eleven, right? But when you go to, you know, in Europe, you're not going to have Target. You're not going to have Costco. And you have to travel a little bit of distance to go to the market. And when you come to America, right? In most of Europe, not not no, not, yeah, not like all of it. I, yes. I've seen Netherlands. It, it's actually more convenient there yes. because it's just a bike ride away or just a corner, yes. and you you find it. Not, and not and they have really good transportation that you don't mind if it's far away. Mm. Um, and but but compared to most of the world, you're right. right. It's yes. more uh, we have convenience. And, in I, and I was talking to my friend uh, yesterday. Uh, she was telling me how like in different countries right the traffic is actually much worse than what we have in america even though we, are, we have like gridlocks a lot of traffic on the freeway the how the system works like the lights and the turns the sign is it's like we call it, it's like it prevents it, it's, it's meant to keep you safe and when it comes go to like what like the philippines vietnam or mm -hmm. any other asian countries they don't want to just go whatever. They don't care about lights, posted signs. There's no whatever. such thing as lanes. <laughs> yes, exactly. You, you, it's, it's like a race where they're like, oh, <laughs> we're taking each other. Ian, Ian, like go to a place where all the roads are just one-way roads. That's oh no, no, yeah, like like in England and London. Yeah, how much to drive uh, my SUV? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the one thing I appreciate about America, like the open roads and the traffic, posted signs and stuff like that. It's very convenient. How about you? Uh, I would say diversity. Even though we're not the only mm. ones, we are actually the rarer ones. The melting like pot. Like you, yeah, you, you would, would you, you would pot. find a melting pot in mm. London too, right. for example. But the biggest melting pot, pot is here. And yeah. the reason why I say that is because if I want to try a different culture's food, right. it's usually just a drive Down away. Down. Yeah, it's uh, obviously l lately I haven't been getting any footage of food on our dish of the day but we're, we're getting into countries that are like very niche but we're like when you go like hey chinese you got chinese you could either have american chinese or you authentic chinese, chinese if you just go to Chinatown. la yes. ja yeah japan J J japan with little tokyo right. um you could get caribbean food somewhere in northeast in la savannah food mexican, yeah you mexican like you, in in the cities in, in america Maybe not in like the Midwest and stuff, yes, but in no. the bigger cities. But you see, you have like a little conclaves of like, and the people, right? Yes. Like this is diverse, but they have their own uh, space that you can yes. visit and experience the culture without traveling to the overseas. And, and the good thing about that yes. is like, even though the news makes it seem it seem like it's bad that we're always arguing with each other, that's actually a good thing a good because thing. you resolving your differences. Not just that, but you're learning um, what the other people's perspective is. Mm. Because if you're trapped in like one place and everybody in that community has the same opinion, mm. you will never you will never know whether that opinion is good or not. You only know that it's what everybody thinks. Yes, yes, not yes. necessarily good or not necessarily bad. So my question for you is: It's like, good that people are disagreeing with you, so, exactly. so you could so test you, your you can test your theories. And yeah, stuff. but the thing is like. It's good that we're such a melting pot, right? Like, would you ever consider yourself going through life without ever experiencing a taco? See? Yeah. That's, that's right. I, I mean, I, I didn't <laughs> even know what a pollo loco is. Right. I saw that sign in the Philippines at the mall, El Pollo Loco, really? but I never went in there. Yeah. Because it was... Out. You're missing out. It, it, yeah, it, in, in here, it's everywhere, right? Yes. So you eventually try it. But in the Philippines, there's like one location back then that is El Pollo Loco, and I was... What is this? Chicken I, crazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know loco means crazy, but... Like, is it crazy food? Is yeah. it crazy spicy? <laughs> but you know America, the tagline for America is what? The land of opportunity? Yes. And when people talk about this, right? They always talk about the American dream. 
they always dream about being in America and that's what you know America does have a lot of opportunities it does have a little bit of hit and miss you know but we, we have to understand that America is pretty great it is. but I don't like the quote that it is the best country no. in the world if you do that you stop you stop improving yes exactly. yes so I, I love this country but I want I want to no one better. to say that it's the best because if you're never the best, you always have a, a reason to keep getting better. Yes. Because you'll never be the best. Yeah, you There's just... always going to be someone better than you. And what you do is you try to beat them. <laughs> and then you just keep climbing. Yeah, exactly, up and up. exactly. So that's the only way for America to be even better is if we just admit that we're not the best. Yes. We're great. And yeah, we can improve. We're great, but we're not the best. Right. You know? I think that's the best mindset you have yeah. as American. Yes. Um, you guys put your uh, before that. You guys put it in your yeah. comments, right? What what your um, what you love about America? Uh, today in history, hmm. 1859, Charles Darwin's <laughs> on the origins of species okay. was published. So the thing was, I guess, when I first saw it, right, I thought it was the origin of spices. The origin of spices. <laughs> I, my mind, my mind was like on food still. Yes, it is. Right. Uh, <laughs> but this is all about uh, natural selection, as you right. saw, or in other words, um, survival of the, the fittest. fittest. So if you are unable to survive, well, you can't really have your uh, descendant continue on. Yeah, you're not. Your species won't continue on. Mm. Uh, for example, us um, as humans, right. we we looked a, a lot different back then than we are now. We did. We did. We're us, more hairier back then. Yeah. We didn't have modern clothes to keep us warm. Yes, but that has become an inconvenience actually, the, yes. the hair. So now we have less hair now oh, because yes. the ones who grew less hair survived and passed on their traits to the to us now, right. to future generations. While those who have maybe a different shape of skull that right. was, you know, and walked a little bit crooked, like like the better ones will always survive. Which is able to pass on their abilities to the next generation. So the, the thing with natural selection, right? Another word for that is evolution. Yes. You are adapting to your environment and how you adapt to your environment allows you best suited to survive. Yeah, and when you say you, not just you individually, mm. but your whole species. Yes. Because like, for example, you, the penguins. If it's a good gene, you pass on the gene. Yeah. Yes. If it, yes. It, yeah. For example, there are penguins that are extinct now because they couldn't survive. They couldn't survive. Mm. Um, but the ones that live right now mm. are the ones who found a way or the ones who not just found a way, but has evolved in a way that lets allows them them to uh, thrive. allows them to thrive. Right. Um, you know, this is like one of those uh, back then when it was first released, right? People were like, this is wrong. This is like against, you know, the teaching of God and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was against big, religion. It was controversial, uh, controversial back then. Same thing with Galileo too. When Galileo was like, we're not the center of Earth, we're the center of the universe, right? It was a controversy with the religious folks too. So yeah. it wouldn't be as expected. So religion and science always, you know, almost always, always. Uh, don't. What do you call this? Uh, Comingo. Yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah. But but I mean. That's the thing is mm. that you can't argue mm. with against facts. The facts. Yeah, you, you can't, can't argue, argue the facts because yeah. this the, he didn't just oh I thought of this and just wrote no, it down. He had proof. He went to the Galapagos and he was studying uh, finches, little birds. Yeah. And each of the beaks were like suited to what they were gonna eat. Yes. Bigger, bigger beaks eat. Uh, if if you ever food, wondered, yeah. you look at the animals. Yes. How come this? How come that cheetah runs so fast? Why it's is because, the giraffe neck so long? Yeah, because it needed it exactly. to eat Survive. the uh, the leaves. The, the the species that the giraffe came from, which has shorter necks, did not live because they couldn't reach their food, you know? Yeah. So uh, as as the longer neck giraffes passed on their gene <laughs> yes. to their children, to their children yeah. those children will also have long necks and they the will be able to survive. Which children will yes. have longer necks, yeah. Um, However, yes. for us humans, that might have not that might be stopping already. Yes, but the thing is, like for us, we do have a little bit of genes that help us, like in sports, your height, your yeah. fitness. They do have genes where it is. You know. But but we've come to a point where there's so much like convenience, right? Because like that yes. uh, it mitigates the it stuff slows down. Yes. It might it slows down the evolution, and 
but but you don't have to worry about that because evolution happens like in centuries millions yeah millions yeah, actually millions, millions yeah. Years, yeah it doesn't just happen suddenly yeah suddenly. We'll, <laughs> like if it happens like that we'll be like mutants like X-Men. yeah like x-men yeah. <laughs> uh notable figure born on this day wait, wait, hold on, hold on. is it is he the one that did uh what's that song called yeah you're right i always play this this is the first song they always teach you when you learn piano (laughs) can you give me a hint what's the first letter uh v the entertainer (laughs) the The entertainer yeah Uh, this is scott joplin he um he's most well known because you just sounded out you just hummed its tune that's like the very first song like they always teach you when you learn piano because it's very easy and very noticeable and very catchy yes Yes. Uh, but there's also maple leaf rag the ragtime dance magnetic rag and the original rag and as you could tell with all the names not all of his songs but the names of what i said they all have rag because his type of music is called ragtime you know, when it comes to his music, I always imagine like steamboats with a huge wheel that's moving towards the Yes, and cartoons. Louisiana. And the cartoons that has their hands like this. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. And, a and then they go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Cuphead. Cuphead. Yes. It's like, what do you got? Vaudeville? Vaudeville? I think so. Vaudeville. Like the like the first Mickey Mouse cartoon. Yeah. Steamboat, yeah, something Steamboat like Mickey. Ste- Steamboat Mickey, yes. Steamboat Mouse or whatever. <laughs> no, it's Steamboat Mickey, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was on Z-Boy, like, doo, doo, doo. Yeah. <laughs> Dish of the day. Where are we going? I believe it's Myanmar. Myanmar. So they have the, uh, but their cuisine is called Burmese because it's from Burma. Yes. And so they have. Oh, me. Oh, Yangi me Thok. Are. It says, so, serve with <laughs> soup. Thok. Uh, hmm. Yangi Thok. Hmm. It looks familiar. Is uh, it, it means that nangi is mean it's the type of noodles used, which is usually like something thick or like udon or something like mm. that. And then thok means salad because in Burmese cuisine they really like their dry noodles, but then they serve the broth separately for you to kind of so that you're not just eating like dry. Yeah, you know, so like you want to like al dente, al dente. You can get it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so it's kind of like a noodle salad, and then you give they give you a broth. Mm. Um, I'd say even though I haven't tried this one uh, specifically, uh, this is actually something I like because one of my favorite Cambodian dish in a place called uh, Rice String Noodle Shack. Oh. In, in Cer- you should go there. Cerritos. Cerritos. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's also a dry noodle. I think it's called Nom Pen Special. And at first, <laughs> it sounds like nothing special. I want the nothing special. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing special. Uh, at first, I they ask you um, uh-huh. whether you want the soup separate, mm. and I said no nah, because I was kind of lazy. <laughs> I was like, just put the soup with the noodles. So I just like, oh, put soup with the noodles, please. Did you regret it? No, at first I did that right, uh-huh. and I liked it already. Okay, okay. But the next time I went there, because I liked the the dish itself, I tried it the other way because I always always like trying something exactly. new. And it's just much better that way, because actually the noodles itself already has flavor. It's it's meant to be a separate dish on its own, so and the broth is just there yeah, for you like to a like, palate cleanser. yeah, palate uh, cleanser. If you combine them, then it actually feels much more wrong because the the flavors mingle when they're not supposed to be. <laughs> it's kind of like eating something that you want with texture, but then you end up blending it. Or more like you know how people drink wine and eat cheese as a palate cleanser imagine like I thought so like wine and cheese i thought you eat cheese and you use wine and... it's not really wrong this is the wine is the highlight oh yes that's right but um but when you do that <laughs> right you do it separately you don't go <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know that, that actually uh, reminds me of a story where when you it was a wine tasting right when you know a person has an issue uh, like a you know when they drink, they don't take a sip. They just down. It. <laughs> You're supposed to sip. <laughs> but yeah, um, the noodle dish typically have onions, turmeric powder, uh, yes, cilantro turmeric. because that always brings in the freshness. Shredded vegetables like cabbage, bean sprouts, and sometimes it has boiled eggs with fish crackers as the I texture. Um, a little crunchy. Yes. The noodles are made with either udon because it's thick or uh, round rice noodles. Mm. 
Animal of the day, we have Argentinosaurus. Is this from Argentina? Yes. Ah. The name <laughs> comes from the fossils, which is found, like you said, in Argentina. You know, I don't, I don't think this is right. Because you look at the neck and look at the legs, I don't think it can support itself. Because like the tail usually has to be big to counterbalance it, right? But I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the neck right now, and it's well. Dramatic. Speaking speaking of evolution, maybe that's why it's extinct because it just keeps falling over. Keep falling over. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I don't know. Uh, there might be a reason for it. It does look kind of wrong, unless it's not really big. But we'll see. Wait, wait, Ian. Yeah. Like, let's wait. I, I'm showing Ian right now, right? But you look at this direction. It looks like a look at elephant. Oh yeah. Well, it is an it is an herbivore. Maybe that's why it needed to have massive necks to protect it from being bitten by T Rex. Or like reach up to the tree <laughs> branches. Yes. Yeah. Uh, its teeth are specialized for grinding rather mm. than cutting. Oh well, yeah. Because you need to grind branches. Uh, they they're not like us yes. humans where we could pick the leaves cleanly from the branch. They have to take a bite out of the tree and then they need to grind that branch. They got no the arms. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have cutting motion because they don't need to cut meat like the uh, carnivores. You'll need to tear or rip it. It lived in the late Cretaceous period. Uh, it is also known to be the largest land animal that was found. Well, I guess my theory of it being small is wrong. Let's take a look at the size comparison. That is pretty big. Dude, it's kind of <laughs> like a, it's kind of one of those. Uh, if you're like we're in the Flintstone, right? We probably use this dinosaur for like crane to build buildings. I think that's the one that Fred Flintstone slid on. Oh. When he went, yeah, but never do, and then he clocked out and he slid down. <laughs> How come we don't have a dinosaur here? I'm gonna ask the budget. What? What do you mean? About how come you didn't? Know? Well, we might. We could get a dinosaur in the next uh, Halloween. You bring one of those elaborate T-Rex costumes. <laughs> Plants of the day. <laughs> we have bean sprouts again. Uh, we already talked about mung beans before, but this yes. time we'll focus on the bean sprout itself, uh, and we're gonna take a look at the dishes that we could find the bean sprouts. So, number one. I don't know what this is. Oh yeah, you don't know what, what that is? What is this? Is this, is this ramen? I'm kidding, nope. it's pho. I know it's pho, it. and um, actually on pho, I don't put the bean sprouts like most people do. What? Because it's raw, I don't like raw bean, bean sprouts. Oh, so what you do is you can put it underneath the noodles. Yeah, it doesn't cook it enough. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there is one pho place that I went to that actually slightly boils. It, it, they didn't boil it for a long time. They probably just um, ran it through some boiling water. Oh, you know what you can do? Uh, some people put a little bit of water in those uh, sandwich bag, put the beans in the microwave for like 30 seconds. It'll or that soft. to make that. it yeah, soft. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it that way. But I guess it's just, I know it's there for the crunch. Yeah, the crispness. The but crisp, but crisp. it has a, a, a specific type of flavor when it's raw that I just don't like. Mm, it's kind of like It's a, very blank. So I'm just yes. filling my stomach with blank. Yes. But when you cook it a little bit, there are, there is actually some flavor that comes out of subtle uh, flavor. It's yeah. kind of like a tofu-ish. Yes, that one I enjoy yes. the flavor. So that's the reason why. So you like the one like in a uh, bank sale, right? Sometimes. Yeah, like this one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, that one. That one. They. So that's the reason why most of the time they serve it raw in a pho because. Like you said, it's meant to be crunched or you're meant to put it underneath, like you said, and yes. then it'll cook, the broth will cook yes. it. But um, in a bun sale, you, it's not going to cook on its own. You, it has to already be cooked for you to put it as a ingredient in the pancake. So right. um, this is called Kong Namul. Is it? What? Is it what? What do we mean? Is it what? When you said the name, it's Korean, right? It is Korean. Gangnam Mul. I never had this. I'm sure you have. Uh, if you went to any Korean barbecue, this is the bean sprout on sesame uh, oil-ish flavor. Is this a plate or is it a tortilla? Because it's throwing me off. The, it looks like a tortilla, but it's usually not served like that. 
usually the the more the times that you encounter this is when you go to a Korean barbecue place, they give you your banchan, which is their appetizer, and then one of them, one of them is usually kimchi because that's the the default. But sometimes it will come with japchae, and sometimes it has kongnamul, which is the bean sprout, and it's flavored with like sesame oil. I feel bad because like I go to Korean barbecue like almost and you all don't, the time, you and don't... I don't know any of these dishes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of them, and this one is a great great example because the the highlight is the bean sprout itself. It's not just a topping right, or right, something. Right. Um, I really like sesame oil. Ooh. Some this is chow mein. Remember that chow mein from Samoa that we talked about? I can't remember. It's something. called something chop suey. Oh yes, yes. Samoan chop suey. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not like a chop suey. It's more like a chow mein with bean sprout in it. That's I like you know, it. That's, I like I like bean sprout in chow mein. It does give a little bit of crunch to it. It's like yes. when you eat chow mein, the, the egg noodle it gets kind of monotonous. It's like a chore to eat. That's why I like the Vietnamese one where they kind of toast it a bit. Because the the sides are more crispy, while the inside is soft. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, texture is a big thing when it comes to food. We make the best food. <laughs> I'm kidding. One of the best. So One of the best. Yeah. Um, art of the day that you guys don't see, but we yeah. always see for some reason in this computer. <laughs> this doesn't happen in my computer. I don't know why it does it here. But anyways. Uh, the last portion of our Sweet Coden 2. Sweet Coden. Uh, you missed the art, but uh, you've seen the art. You always see the art everywhere. But today it is going to be the music, which is another form of art. Um, this is the composer Miki Higashino and Keiko Fukami, but the, I could only find a picture of Miki Higashino. You know, some of these uh, people are very recluse. <laughs> they make music, they give it to the students, like, ah, yeah. no, don't, don't show me. Yep. <laughs> don't show my face. Yeah, don't I show just, my face. I want to be known by what my music, music, not the face. <laughs> yeah. She composed the music for many of the games that came from the same company who made Sukoden 2, which is Konami. Mm. Uh, when I was doing the research for this, I just realized most of my favorite games as a childhood, childhood is Konami. Metal Gear. One of them, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Metal Gear. Not, Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh is Konami. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is Konami, but that's not my favorite. Don't, don't count, yeah, don't I only count. played it because everyone else is doing it. I'm trying to think of other Konami stuff. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yes, Turtles in Time. Yes. Um, even the old just beat em up, uh, like the 1985 Streets one. Streets of Rage, kind um, of side-scrolling. Sukoden was Konami. Oh, Konami. Castlevania is Konami. Oh, yes. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Vandal Hearts is Konami. Vandal Hearts is Konami. Yeah. Uh, so many are like made by this amazing company, but now... It's a pachinko company. Yeah, it's a gambling company now. <laughs> so, um, although Konami, yeah, d- doesn't really make good games anymore, that's we could look back. And this is the first uh, music. Uh, this is called. Let me. Reminiscence. Reminiscence, uh, and it is the song that plays at the start of the game after um, you guys were branded as uh, traitors. Traitors. And the only way to escape was to jump in like a tall cliff the, in a, near a waterfall. It's like and a, you never know whether you survive or not. Right. So it starts doing a flashback of when you were kids. So I showed you a picture of the main character, Ryo, and Joey. And, there, and there's his sister, Nanami, right there. Jowie. Yeah, Jowie. <laughs> Jowie. <laughs> and you can see that in this picture, this is the... They're playing hopscotch. They're playing hopscotch, yeah. Um, this is the music right now. Let's Let reminisce play it. our childhood. You can see it has a lot of piano. Piano is usually the like the instru- instrument of uh, choice when it comes to f- like memory, like yes. recalling things like that. Uh, next, the name the song is Two River, which is actually the name of the city itself that the song plays in. Mm. And it's called Two River because it's a city that is divided by two rivers. You know, that's one of the common tropes is the two rivers. When we always talk about that, like history, we always talk about the Tigris and Euphrates because those are like, you know, 
civilization. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but in here, the two rivers divide the city into three because, like, if uh, obviously if there's two lines right. that cut something, there's gonna be three sections, right? right? That's true. And it's divided between the humans on the far left side. You can see their buildings are very rich because that's where the government is and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And then the kobolds, which are like humanoid dogs, which are like actually my favorite species in the game. They because have zero attack and one defense. <laughs> no, they're actually very strong. They're very militaristic. Um, but they're also very naive. They're like kind of like childlike. I think they're kind of like like uh Cause they're more like hyenas puppies. like hyenas right <laughs> think of hyenas in simba and lion king i guess but like but in here they're more like conniving they're just dogs, dogs. They, they, they're okay. literally like most of them act like puppies okay while the more like the doberman guy the guy that looks like a doberman is right. like the military leader and right. he's more he's more older and doesn't act like a puppy and then on the far right uh with that character named chaco are the winged beings and the thing about Two River is that because there's three different cultures, uh, they're always difference. squabbling with yes. each other. And uh, the whole arc of the story when you visit this town is to kind of bring them together. Unite. Because they need to help you. Uh, again, them. yeah, you, like I said the story before, you're the guy that's gathering all these people together. So let's take a listen of Two Rivers. Two Rivers. So I had to wait until that second part because uh, the flute, the flute, and that and the cool thing about that music it represents all three of the the tribes. tribes. You got the the wind instrument for right. the winged beings. Wing beings. Uh, there is a drums that is very um, um, it's uh, it's not like a modern drum. It's more like a a bongo. Yeah, because as you can see, the kobolds aren't a very um, they're primitive. Yeah, they're very primitive. And they, they had the drums because, like I said, they're militaristic. Right. And drums is usually the choice of instrument for that. And, and then you the got the bell, lute. The lute. The lute for the humans it's because they're modern. the refined more modern, you know, yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I, I showcase this because it's great that the music actually reflects the story of the, the it's place kind of, itself. It, it does, the, the, the name of the song makes sense too because like when you hear the thumping of the drums, it's kind of like the water crashing on rocks. Yeah. We have the flute, you hear the winds are blowing through the water yes. and the ting is kind of like water droplets, like ting, sparkling. Yeah. So it's really good. That's a good music. This one is called A Busting Town and that is the overhead view of the castle Busting? that you eventually build. Be, build, build. <laughs> build. <laughs> Uh, once you gather your uh, characters. Is it bustling or bustling? I, I actually thought it was bustling, okay. but it's called the busting okay, town. Okay, okay good. Uh, and this is the sound. Okay, let's bust this town. see it's very upbeat it sounds like something you go into like the <coughs> market the town market yes because usually when you go to the castle yes you're visiting the different types of services it offers you the dojo yes the market yes. where you can buy stuff um but the bath like uh, everything so it sounds like a market because it literally is a market where every single amenity and item being sold is there. Be found there. But the thing is, like the music, you can tell it's by the same composer because the same instrument is being used again yes. like in Two Rivers. And, oh, <coughs> excuse me, hmm. so dry that my throat. Because the humidity that bad. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, actually, uh, last night I, was, I had to turn on my humidifier because it's so dry. Oh, no. 
oh. with the, with the wind. But anyways, oh, yeah. with this, it needs to be very lively mm. because you want you you hear the song a lot you because you have to go back to bass yeah. like, and and it needs to be a song that doesn't make you depressed or doesn't make you feel anything but be happy being here. I mean, you have to be happy to spend money, right? That's true. That, that's why that's the sound that you hear. Like, like I'm yeah. happy. Let's spend some. Let's buy some. Uh, I don't know armor. But but the, the the biggest thing is that you visit this often because this is your castle. Right. So it needs to have a music that makes you feel happy. You lift yourself up. Yeah. Or or if you're playing the game and you don't like the music being ha the music is not happy, you really feel tired of being here. So, so Ian, I have a confession. What? Um, when I play games, I always turn on that sound. Uh, to each their own. I always focus on the game and just. For get it for done. me, I need the sound. I it, don't. It, it I, I just turn it off. I don't know why. Yeah, it, the only time I turn off the sound is if I'm playing an MMO, which you play it you for hours and yes. hours, so uh, you get tired of the music. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, this is called Imprison Town, uh, and this is the town music for a place called Green Hill, which is actually a university oh. among among the forest. That's why it's called Green Hill. Mm. But in the story, it was captured by the enemy. That's why it's an imprisoned town. There's only one Green Hill that I recognize. It is from and That's in Sonic. So oh, yes. man, you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> but I said university, right? right. So you're probably going to hear the most common uh, instrument that usually gets associated with something intellectual. Uh, the harp. The harpsichord. Oh, yes. I yes. Knew it. So let's take a listen to uh, Green Hill City's Imprisoned Town. And from mm. last and, and from last time you 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 heard um, from Castlevania the library had the yes. very similar sounding Harper thing. Yeah. yeah, Harper you, you harpsichord is usually used for uh, you know the smart places basically. I feel like it tried to capture the feeling of like going to these massive halls where Mozart is playing. All these people are dressed really that's fancy. That's true. That's the old the old capturing. idea of a university. Yes, yes. They try to capture that intellectual exactly. sophistication kind of sound. Harpsichord. And now we have the chase. <laughs> and I show you four different screens here because like I said last time, to defeat this guy Luca, uh, you see on the top left, right. you attack him with your group plus an army of archers behind. Yes. And then he he, he retreats, you attack, you corner him to the north with another group and he's still laughing at you. He says, wah ha 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 ha. <laughs> um, and then next, you corner him to a cliff, and he's still saying, look at me, I am sublime, I am the true face of evil. Oh, man. Uh, and he's not going down, you have to one-on-one -on -one him, as you can see on the bottom right um, corner. Bottom right, yes. So you, you want a music that is very dread-sounding in here. He is the face yes. of evil. So uh, let me see if I have that the here. The chase. Yeah, it, is, it, it makes you think that this is the climax of the game, but like I spoiled last time, after you defeat him, you're like, why is the game still going? <laughs> Wait, I hear boss music. <laughs> Jowie? Why, why is Jowie here asking me to surrender my army? I, uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, yes, uh, it very, it's very fitting with Luca Blight, uh, the true face of evil, as he <laughs> says. And finally, my favorite music in this game is actually uh, called Gothic Necklord because yeah, I thought we were, I thought we were playing Suicoda. What is this Castlevania? 
that he's a vampire <laughs> and he's actually a vampire that appeared on the first week Odin, okay but because he's immortal he uh, appeared he here as here. well yeah and um the reason why is because he could just he's immortal well, yes in here you finally put him down but it requires a whole bunch of other things one is a vampire hunter who casts this like circle thing that you see on the ground <laughs> right. so that he cannot escape, like turn into a bat and escape once you beat him. There's a white bat right there. Yes, there's a white bat because you need the help of another vampire oh. who is uh, who has another rune that counteracts the immortality of um, Nick Lord. I'm so th oh, sorry, but the thing is when I see this picture right here, right, where all your... Your party is dead. <laughs> so that happened to me... Uh, this weekend when I was playing a game, right? There was this boss that was like, really, it really made me mad. And I, I was like, I got to beat him. I got to beat him, right? <laughs> when I finally beat him, all my teams were, you know, dead. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> at what cost? Like, it wasn't at worth what it. cost? <laughs> but here's the thing about Gothic Nick Lord, right? right? You, you know that this, this music is going to sound very vampiric because it's going to have an organ in it. Yes, yeah, organ. But what uh, Miki did is she, she made it surprisingly modern huh i want to see the tape. okay let, tape. Let, let's take a listen it's, it's surprisingly modern for something with organs mm. and a vampire you know first heard the intro right i was like thinking of mortal kombat or i think it was like Kazuya because of the Tekken. because of the upbeat drums yeah, the, 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 and then the, the the organ is actually weaved into the drums you know, it, get, <laughs> it gets you really pumped up you know this is a fight yes. yes and that's that's why it's my favorite because this guy has been harassing you since the first sweet code in game oh, yeah. <laughs> and finally you're gonna bring him down so they give Once you this yeah they all. give you this like you know what do you call this fist pumping music to it's like i like, had a tiger yeah yeah like i have a tiger uh the, it's a, one of the most popular songs whenever you, there's a boxing match yes. because it gets you riled up you mm, know yes. we're like uh we are the champion you know something that really pumps you up yes yeah, that, that's that's actually like one of my favorite because even though it's not a fast song is we are the champ you know it's like slow it's very uh Adrenaline rushing. It's like rallying. <laughs> yeah, rally. it's a rallying yes. uh, music. Now we have... What are our proverbs? Our words word of, of the day. day. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we oh, fall yeah, by absolutely. Nelson Mandela. It's anything like how it goes back to how we say how America is, uh, you know, the great. It's mm -hmm. because... We don't, want to see, we don't want to see ourselves as the best. We want to see ourselves getting better and better, right? Yep. We had to fail at one point in time, and every time we get up, it's, it's like the underdog, right? You yeah. want to see someone face that adversity and become better. You want to sprinkle failure across a wide margin, because if you put failure in one spot, you get Rome. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, wait, right? You know, the funny thing was like when you were saying sprinkling, right? I was like, like thinking like sprinkling a little bit of salt, right? A little bit of failure, right? But then for my life, it's kind of like you opened the whole cap and the whole salt came out. That, that's Rome. Yeah. When when the cap falls off and the salt just goes. Tush. You know, but that's what they call it. Uh, one of the uh, falling of Rome was the uh, salting of Carthage. There you go. When Rome was defeated, right? They put salt in all the soil so all the plants won't grow again. That's how yeah. much they hate it. So, yeah, you don't want... I don't want to see the United States no. fall like Rome. No. We, want to, we want to recognize every time we fail yes. so that we could fix it. Fi patch it up. Patch it up, like, little by little. Rather than, like, we wait until everything just comes crashing down. And we came close to that. The Great Depression is yes. one of the uh, big things that happened yes, that came yes, close yes. to 
that's when everything just falls in one spot and a lot of people suffered because of it. It's kind of like Jenga. When you, when you have failures, right? You just want a portion of it to fall off. You don't want the whole thing collapsing. Right? <laughs> you don't, yeah, you, because you'll never be able to prevent failing completely. No, no, no. You, 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 you have know, to mitigate it. Yeah, you, you, you have to kind of accept it and then just learn from it, is right. what he's saying, rather than Oh yeah, I'm the best. Like, cause then you never realize that you're failing until it's too late. Yes, that is true. And finally, food fact of the day. What is our food fact? At some fast food chains, both in U.S. and other countries, managers are rewarded bonuses when they reduce employee wages to save money. That is so bad. Yes. Uh, however, it is true. So, uh, you as a consumer. Um, I don't like this. <laughs> no, you could do things. I we don't. I don't like it either. But like, here's the thing that you, as a consumer, could do something about it. Number one, if something is a little bit more expensive, right? You try to find something. Think, that's think, of, think of it for a second. For example, okay. there are some states where they don't make you um, tip anymore, but their prices are higher. Yes. I prefer that because that makes sure that the employee is being paid properly. So what we call that is price in. Yeah, yes. ra rather than being, rather than having to gamble whether they're going to be able to I pay the bill. Or I feel not. bad for people like that because it seems like they, they're like begging for it. And I feel bad. I feel bad. Yeah, and I, and that for me, me. That for, me, me. Yeah. for me, because I'm always resistant, mm. it's hard for me to tip because um, I feel like if I do, it just perpetuates it. Yes, it, so, it's like it's okay to continue doing this yeah, pra practice. Exactly. So, um, you know, another thing that you could do is be don't be mean to fast food workers yes. just because they're playing, they're they're doing a work that is unskilled. Yes. A lot of people medial, I yeah. see yeah. are mean to them, and they always say, "Well, you should have been higher Same education school. than a high school. Yeah, yeah. You should have had a career." Not everybody is. Not everybody has the opportunity yes. that the same opportunity that you have. Yes. And number two. They already have it um, rough. Yes. Uh, remember, uh, Alucard's mother, uh, do not hate humans. <laughs> Be if, you could, if you could not live with them, at least do them no harm, because theirs is already a hard lot. I'm pretty sure Jesus said that too. Forgive them for they don't know what they do. See? It's that, no, that is a little bit different. It's always, it's always been it. But, but here you could swap the word humans with... Uh, low-skilled workers. <laughs> he said, workers. do not hate low-skilled workers. And if you cannot live with them because you're too rich, yes. at, um, at least do them no harm. Yes. Don't be mean to them. Because right. they're already having their own troubles. Yes. You know, it's so hard to pay yeah. the bills. So that's all that you could do. You're you know? dealing with so much already. You don't want another stuff on. Exactly. Something. And yeah. this is one, one of the things you have to <sighs> deal with. Your managers... Getting paid more because you got paid less. Like, this is horrible. So bad, so bad. And to that horrible note, that is the end of our show. You know, you guys, thank you guys for sticking with us. And you guys will have a good, nice, safe Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, as always, I recommend you guys listen to the whole songs. I'm only going to, be, we only show you a, a small clip of it, but we do show you the title of the song. So you can always uh, put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And search for it if you have is one of them is something you fancy uh, I know some of those are in my playlist that mm -hmm. I listen to when I'm in the car mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I don't listen to at the car is like Eurobeat because it makes me go faster for some Rage <laughs> racer it, yeah like if, if I listen to like initial D music I, I notice Stop it I don't about initial D I, I don't want to watch it again I'm like in the freeway and I'll be following the speed oh limit my gosh, dude. and then when when there's like dun, 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 and I'm like, whoa, I'm going 80 already. <laughs> so you turn your nitrous oxide. <laughs> Afterburner. That's the power of music. It makes yes. you feel something, you know? <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a good uh, holiday. Good weekend. Yep. We'll see you guys back on Monday. And remember, there's no uh, daily video for Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Yep. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.